Welcome back to the channel guys. In today's video, we are going to be CNC machining an LS1 engine block. Before we get into the video guys, if you have any questions for me about your engine build, schedule a call with me via my Tazit profile. Link in the description and in the top comment below. Quick backstory on this engine block. It actually belongs to one of my good friends, Ben. It came in an F-body Camaro that he purchased. It already had a 383 in it, but it had some issues. The head gaskets were leaking a little bit. It always had a random misfire code. So we decided, you know what? Let's pull the engine out. Let's go through it at the shop and let's make it right. And hey, maybe we can find a little more horsepower in it. So we got the engine block torn down. Sure enough, the head gasket surface finish on the engine block is not ideal but luckily we have the machinery and the capabilities to make it very ideal. So we are blueprint fixture surfacing this engine block. We're referencing the main tunnel and the cam tunnel to give us a perfect 90 degree surface finish. So we're actually blueprinting it to a 90 degree V8 spec. Currently, uh, whoever surfaced it prior did not do that. And it's much higher on this side than it is on this side. But again, with this fixturing, we can correct that and make it perfect. So I've actually already zeroed the block into the machine. I have my cutter head ready. I am ready to start surfacing it. So I'm gonna put you guys on the tripod and we'll get the time lapse going. Now that the block has been parallel surfaced in our CNC machine, we are now going to hone it in our Rottler cylinder hone. As you can see, we have installed dual torque plates on the engine to accurately simulate the stresses of the fasteners when they're torqued down with cylinder heads. It will distort the bore a little bit. We are running the same head stud kit that this motor is going to run in its version 2.0. So anyways, we got plates installed. I've got stones loaded up in the hone, programs ready to rock, so we can now hone this block to its final size. Because we are going to run a 4032 alloy forged piston, I'm targeting about three thousandths of piston to wall clearance.
And this is basically the process of cylinder honing. We're gonna make small adjustments as we approach the final bore diameter. We're gonna be checking the tops, the middles, and the bottoms of the cylinders to make sure they're honing perfectly straight and not at a weird shape or angle. And then once we get to our final size, we'll do a plateau finish hone to get the cylinder walls prepped for the piston rings. And then we're done with this step of machining. Okay guys, the engine block is now at its true final size, but because it is an aluminum block, I'm gonna let it rest. I'm gonna let it rest for about 30 to 45 minutes. I have found that with these factory aluminum blocks, especially the Gen 3 LS ones, because we're putting so much pressure on the cylinder walls for an extended period of time during the honing, the block actually flexes a little bit. It'll actually grow just from the pressure. And I've noticed that if you let it sit for about 30 or 45 minutes, it'll shrink back down a couple ten thousandths of an inch. So it's standard practice now. I'm gonna let it sit for a little bit. We'll come back, final check all the cylinders, touch up any that might need touching up. And then this block is done and ready to go into assembly. The engine block is now final honed exactly to size. All the clearances are perfect. Again, with a 4032 alloy forged piston. It's forged, but they have a higher silicon content than 2618, so they have less thermal expansion, which makes a lot of sense for a naturally aspirated street engine. And in this engine, I'm running about three thousandths of piston to wall clearance. Now that we're done honing the block, it's going to get out of the home. We'll take torque plates off of it. We'll deburr the top and the bottom of the cylinder. That way the piston and the piston rings go in nicely up top and the piston doesn't scratch itself whenever it has to come back up from bottom dead center. So we'll get the block deburred next and then we are almost done with machining. Now it's time to balance the crankshaft for this 383 LS1. So we have the crankshaft on the balancer. We have the bob weights already put on it. These are what bob weights are. Their job is to simulate the crankshaft, the pistons, the piston rings, the bearings as everything rotates in the engine. We've already measured the weights of everything. We've weight matched the pistons, we've weight matched the rods, and now we're going to spin the crank up and then our system will tell us where we need to drill it to make it perfectly in spec. We also tell the computer what the engine's application is going to be and its RPM range, so that way it knows the correct tolerance to run. Pretty trick.
Okay, David has knocked out the balance job on this LS four inch stroke crankshaft. Everything is totally within spec on our ProDyne, ProBow dynamic software system that we now run on our Heinz machine. We just recently renovated it to have the latest and greatest um, sensors, motor control, software. So crankshaft is well within tolerance for the engine's RPM range. We actually set the tolerance for 8,000 RPM. So this motor's never gonna see that much RPM with the cylinder head that it's getting. And yeah, it's perfect, ready to rock. We are now done with the machining portion of this engine build. The next steps are going to be blueprinting the short block. So we're gonna check the piston ring gap. We're gonna set bearing clearance with the block and then we can start the final assembly. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel because we are going to dyno this engine at the very end of this video series. Look forward to seeing y'all later. Have a good day.